Hey, Amazing Mess fam. I wanted to talk today about homeschooling and how to get started. Those are the questions that I'm getting. Um, so that's what I'm going to talk about, I think, for the next couple of weeks um, on YouTube. So let's talk about how to even get started homeschooling. So this won't be like an in-depth step-by-step um, thing to do, but these are just some general recommendations that I have for getting started. These are things that I found helpful when I started. So the very first thing that I did was I started to visit families that homeschooled, and that was so helpful to me because I could see a variety of families and how they chose to homeschool, what that looked like day to day, um, and I could talk to them and I know like homeschooling parents like to talk about what's working for them and what's not working for them And so it was just a really great way for me to see what homeschooling looks like in reality um, Because a lot of people are maybe thinking about homeschooling because of COVID-19 um, Homeschooling How do I want to say this without homeschooling isn't necessarily just like school at home right so there are some people who do like a traditional kind of here let's pull out the desks and let's do that um make it look like a classroom in our home but homeschool has so many more possibilities than that and so for us we have a very relaxed kind of homeschool um i do have things that i want them to accomplish but I take a much more relaxed approach. So if you go visit other homeschoolers, that can just give you some ideas so that you could think about homeschooling beyond, you know, what you might have in your mind already. Because you might just think it's like a classroom at home and it really isn't. So I think it really is a good idea to do that. Um, number two, you need to find out the homeschooling laws in your state. So homeschooling is legal in every state, but there are different requirements that are put on you by your state. So for example, in Kansas, um, we operate as an unaccredited private school. And so we are just supposed to basically um, do equivalent work to what the public school is doing. And so that makes my record keeping process and all of that kind of more simple than I know some other states are. So you really need to find out what the laws are in your state so that you can make sure you're um, addressing those things. If you need to keep attendance, if you need to keep track of hours, if you need to keep track of days, that way you um, make sure you're following those laws. <laughs> Um, the third thing I recommend is to figure out what kind of cur curriculum approach um, works for you. So there's no one right way. There's no one right curriculum. There's no one best curriculum. It really depends on you, your teaching style, and your child and what they learn best with. And a lot of times you'll start a curriculum and you'll realize, oh, okay, this isn't really working, so I'm gonna stick with this for a while, but if not, I'm gonna scrap it. <laughs> and you just need to let yourself be okay with that because when you're new and you're starting out, you're not gonna, I mean, I don't make the best curriculum choices even now, and I've done this for almost 10 years. So just give yourself a lot of grace and, um, but also research some of the curriculum approaches. So like a traditional, that would be like a more um, school-based approach, right? Like a traditional kind of school. There's the classical approach, which is based on the educational philosophy of the Greeks and Romans. We did classical conversations for a while, so we utilized that approach for a little while. Um, a unit study approach or unschooling. Well, a unit study um, is more kind of like what or themes is what I used like when I wrote my preschool curriculum but I don't necessarily use that anymore for the girls so um, an unschooling approach I don't have a lot of experience with this because I haven't really done it so you would kind of have to look up probably <laughs> some more on that Charlotte Mason was an educational pioneer in Great Britain and her key ideas were living books short lessons narration and nature studies you can read more about that at Ambleside Online or simply Charlotte Mason.
An eclectic approach, of course, combines a variety of approaches, and this is kind of more where I fall, so I just use a variety of approaches in our homeschool. Um, and number four, read some great books. This was very helpful to me when I first started out. My very favorite book is by Sally Clarkson, and it's called Educating the Wholehearted Child. And I reread that every year, and it's just, it has so much information in it that I love it, and I highly recommend it. Um, if you could only afford one book, I would recommend that book. Um, I'm sure, I mean, there's all kinds of new books out and things. So this is like me from <laughs> 10 years ago, right? Like what I read when I started out. There's also a book called Teaching from Rest um, that I think is an excellent book that helps you know you're not alone. It, it, it just really is an encouragement to your soul. Um, of course, there's a lot of blogs and there's a lot of videos and there's a lot of things out there. And I think it's good to like go ahead and watch those and read those. But sometimes you can get like information overload and then you can't even begin because you're just so worried or anxious about it. And you just need to dive in and you just need to go, right? Like you can analyze things. I'm an overanalyzer. <laughs> so you can analyze it and you can um, try to plan every part of it. And But sometimes you just got to jump in and you just got to do it. So number five, attend a homeschool convention. I highly recommend a homeschool convention that has um, a shopping area so that you can look at curriculum. You can actually see it hands on. Um, figure out what's going to work, what you think is going to work for each individual child, what is going to work for your family together. Um, when the girls were small, especially, we did a lot of schooling together and then just had our core kind of math and reading uh, separate. Um, but attending a homeschool convention is really a great way to get a look at all that's out there. Now, I do recommend going with a friend um, who already homeschools because it can be very overwhelming and because there are so many more curriculum options than there used to be and so it's just nice to have someone to kind of bounce ideas off of and figure it out that way uh, so those are my tips oh I like to I've gone to teach them diligently conferences and then I've also gone to just a local conference that I like to so you can check the I mean just Google search or look for teach them diligently or something like that and you can find all of that and the very last thing that I recommend when you're getting started homeschooling is to find some support so there are hard days I mean there are hard days and it makes a difference if you have people in your corner that are cheering you on that you can call that you can text when you're having a terrible day and especially if you have family or you have other friends who are just like, why are you doing this? I mean, homeschooling is terrible. Or I mean, you know, they're saying all these kind of things to you. You need to have people that you can talk to and that, you know, you can just meet them for coffee or you can do whatever so that you have that support. There are also homeschool support groups and all kinds of things like that. Of course, on Facebook, there's all kinds of groups that you can find, but really having at least one or two people in your corner is so important as you go through the day to day of homeschooling. So those are my kind of just basic ideas for getting started homeschooling. Um, I would love to know if you have any questions or anything else I could answer about that. And you can leave those in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope that you have a great day and go make some memories with your kids.